Hello everyone, and welcome to the 10 days of JavaScript. Here we are in day number zero, and the question is, where do we begin if we want to learn JavaScript? Well, in my mind, the answer is simple. We begin with the language itself. But what do I mean by that? The human mind is made for language, right? The same way that a cheetah is born to run, you and I are born to use language. It's our superpower, and it comes naturally, right? Parents don't have to, quote, teach their children how to speak. You simply talk in front of a child, and they naturally absorb language. The human mind is able to put all the puzzle pieces together without breaking a sweat. So let's use this strength to our advantage because I found that when students view JavaScript big picture as a language just like English or Spanish or Mandarin, the learning process becomes so much easier. But on the other hand, if instead you view JavaScript as just a big long list of made up words that you need to memorize, well, in that case, learning JavaScript feels like trying to grab a fistful of sand. Very difficult to grasp. So right now, let me give you an example of what I mean when I say that we should begin with the language itself. Let's take English as an example. So here's a sentence. The asked cat quickly ate the zizix. Now, two of the words in this sentence are made up nonsense. But because we understand the structure of the English language, it doesn't really matter that we don't know what these words mean. We can still basically understand the sentence as a whole. So we want this same level of comfort with the JavaScript language. Uh, because once you understand the structure of a language, it gives you contextual clues to help you understand what's going on, even if you don't understand each word individually. Right? We still know that there's a cat and it's quickly eating something. Okay, now at this point you might be wondering what does this have to do with JavaScript and computer programming? Well, let me give you a metaphor. So again, let's take the English language, and we know that we speak English in many different environments. Just for two quick examples, let's take your family's home and your workplace. So you speak English in both environments, but each environment also has its own made up words or jargon or slang that are not part of the language itself. Right, so maybe in your family's home, you have a made up nonsense word uh, to describe the way your dog eats its food. Who knows, every home and family is different, but the point is, is that you probably have unique little phrases or words that if you used with a stranger, they would just look at you weird and have no idea what you mean. Right, and it's the same thing with your workplace. No matter which industry you work in, it probably has its own unique set of jargon or slang or made up words. And people outside of your workplace environment probably will not understand these words or phrases. Okay, so there's this distinction between language and environment. Okay, and it's the same thing with JavaScript. JavaScript is also spoken in different environments. Some of the most common are the web browser, Node.js, MongoDB, and countless others, but these are just three of the most popular. Don't worry, I do not expect you to know what Node is, and I do not expect you to know what MongoDB is. We will learn about those things later on in the course. For now, all you need to know is that there are multiple environments in which JavaScript can be spoken. And just like with the English environments, like our family's home and workplace, each environment has its own unique made up words or jargon or slang. So for example, here's a line of JavaScript code that you would use in the web browser environment. Now don't worry, I do not expect you to understand this code at all. I'm only showing it right now to demonstrate the difference between language and environment. So hang in there with me. Uh, this code tells the web browser to show a pop-up message that reads, thanks for clicking, anytime the visitor clicks anywhere on the page. Now here's the important part. Even though this is a line of JavaScript code, none of these words are part of the JavaScript language. So for example, the word document, or the squished together phrase of add event listener, or the word click or alert. Yes, these are words in the English language, but they are not words in the JavaScript language. 
These words only have meaning within the context of the web browser environment. If you used any of these words in a different JavaScript environment, it would be like using one of your made up family words with a stranger. Okay, but the question becomes, if these words are not in the JavaScript language, then what makes this line of code JavaScript? Well, it's the periods, the parentheses, the quotes, the commas, and the other symbols. These are the structure or skeleton or syntax of the language. They are the glue that holds the sentence together. And that is what we want to learn first. And that's exactly what we're going to focus on in this first chapter. By the end of this chapter, when you see a line of JavaScript code, you're going to have the same feeling as when I showed you this sentence in English, right? You might not understand every single word individually, but because you understand that there are adjectives and nouns and verbs, your mind is still able to get a general idea of what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna get that same level of comfort and familiarity and even predictability with JavaScript. Getting to that point has got to be our first goal. It's the first step to genuinely understanding a programming language. Now, if you've ever tried to learn JavaScript in the past, but got discouraged because it seemed too difficult or confusing, it's probably because the teacher took the opposite approach. Far too many teachers make the mistake of having you begin by memorizing environmental jargon, right? These made up words that are unique to each environment. They start out by having you memorize these words and abilities before you even understand the glue that holds everything together, right? The language itself, the syntax, the structure. Now, teachers do this because they underestimate you, your intellect, and your attention span. They think that if you don't build a cheesy click me, I'm a button app in the first 10 minutes of the course that you'll get bored and give up. They think that you don't have the mental capacity for abstract ideas. And they think that you need to jump into concrete examples right away or you'll get confused. Okay, but I know that that's not true. The fact that you mastered the English language is proof that it's not true. Your mind was made for language and we're going to leverage that on our way to becoming a full stack JavaScript developer. So here's what we're going to do in this course. Like I said, in our first chapter, we're going to focus on the language itself. After that, once we've built up a bit of comfort, we're then going to learn the three most popular and lucrative JavaScript environments which as of today are the web browser, Node.js, and MongoDB. Again, don't worry, at this point, I do not expect you to know what Node or MongoDB are. We will learn about that later in the course. For now, all you need to know is that there are multiple JavaScript environments, and each one has its own unique set of jargon or slang or lingo or new vocabulary. And using these words is how we perform the unique abilities of that environment. Here's a quick example for each of these big three environments. Hey web browser, when someone clicks on this button, do this in response. Hey node, when someone visits this URL, please show them this content. And hey MongoDB, please save this data into a database so we can access it later on in the future. Now obviously you can't just use plain English like this, but the idea is that each environment has its unique jargon or lingo or new vocabulary, new made up words that you use in your code to perform these unique abilities. Okay, and as fun as that is and as tempting as it might be to jump right into that, we need to begin first with the language itself, the symbols, the syntax, the structure, the anatomy of a JavaScript sentence. Once we're comfortable with that, then we can jump into the concrete uses for JavaScript in the real world in these environments. And that, my friends, is how we become a full stack JavaScript developer. We combine the abstract with the concrete. We learn the language and then we understand how to use it to build all layers of an application. This holistic skill set is incredibly in demand. It can be very lucrative, but more importantly, it can be very fun and rewarding. So I don't know about you, but I am very excited to get started on this JavaScript journey with you. In our very next lesson, we're going to begin coding, experimenting, and moving right along.
So let's get things rolling. Let's start building some momentum. And I will see you in the next lesson. The 10 Days of JavaScript is the first chapter from my upcoming premium course, Full Stack JavaScript from Scratch. I'm making these first 10 or 11 videos freely available on YouTube. And so for the next 10 days, I'm going to upload one new video each day. So stay tuned, or if you're watching this in the future, all the lessons are up, so feel free to binge watch. The full premium course is not available just yet, but if you subscribe to this channel, you'll be notified as soon as it's out. Or if you're watching this video in the future, it's already available. Enjoy.